Well, this hey, place. this is Rex Burks from Skeptical Texans, and I took a left at the valley. I know we shouldn't have to scream that we're atheists. You know, we don't have non-astrologers and all that. But with the religious people taking over the world, I mean, we can either speak up or be pushed into a corner. I'm proud of being an atheist, a skeptic, a non-believer, an infidel, a heathen. I call it how I see it. I say it's ignorance, and you just call it faith in us. Coming to you from Scorching Hot BC, this is Left of the Valley. My name is Kevin, and my neighbors ask that I keep down all the sex noises. Problem is, I live alone. <laughs> Joining me as usual is a team that ate four cans of alphabet soup and will have the biggest vowel movement tonight. Heck yeah, this is the best kind of soup. <laughs> she used to open the car door for me. Would have been nicer if we had not been going 60 miles an hour. Nancy. <laughs> What do you expect from a trained assassin? <laughs> and she's so clever that sometimes she doesn't even understand a single word she's saying. Christina. It's funny how true that is, though. It really is. <laughs> and she plays bridge like sex. If she doesn't have a good partner, she has a good hand. <laughs> Kirsten. <laughs> yeah, she only has one of those, though. <laughs> but it's really well trained. It is Ladies, very well trained. Welcome back. <laughs> Hope you had a good week. It was way too oh, fucking yeah. hot. Scorching. Way too hot. Actually, way too humid. It was disgusting. Yeah. It was my kind of weather. No. <laughs> oh, it was, Well, was it like Wednesday? It was like 32, 33. Yeah. Which is, uh, for American friends, was that 90 degrees? I honestly yeah, right have no it's idea. About, it's about 90 degrees. Yeah. yeah so. But I lived in Texas for a long time, so yeah. I like But the, it was it was also muggy. As long as you yeah. can put a yeah. fan on and keep the air moving yeah, even and have with a, some fan, iced tea, it's gross. we're good. Because I, I in the much. middle of that heat, I was working in, a, uh, in yeah. a parlor in a dairy farm. So I also had about 100 cows surrounding me with their body heat. Oh, yes. Oh, so I can gross. relate. I was sitting on a forklift, which is like sitting on a heater. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was not fun. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, so today we'll be talking to Hertzie Hertz of the Minnesota Atheist. So that should be fun. But first, yeah. that's going to be in the second part of the show. First, let's do a bit of chit chat. Uh, did you guys hear that uh, this, according to NBC, travel to the U.S. has uh, dropped somewhere between 11 to 16 percent since Donald Trump took I office? I am wow. even slightly surprised. Yeah. I am surprised it's that low. Uh, same here. Same here. Uh, although business trips are, have been up 3 percent, but that's apparently lower than the otherwise uh, the, than the other countries. So well, even business is kind of down, but it's it's up, but it's not up as it, much as yeah. the other countries. Yeah. Well, the rich guys are profiting, you know, from the Trump yeah. administration. So uh, I can I can understand why business mm-hmm. would be up. I guess they're tired of winning. I guess already. Yeah. Uh, apparently, they're blaming uh, Trump's uh, Trump's regime immigration policies. Also, the strong U.S. dollar it could be suspected of yeah. stopping some tourism from happening in the states. Meanwhile, though, staying in the states, Vermont has been rated the best state to live in the U.S. Also, not surprised, because guess hmm. who their senator is? Yeah, guess who that certain <laughs> senator is? Bernie Sanders! Some kind of socialist guy. Look yep. at that. So CNBC, this is from a CNBC, uh, they use factors uh, like affordable housing, education quality, the cost of living, health care quality, job, and environment. And uh, Good for them. Yeah. I, I would want to live in Vermont, because guess what else they have in Vermont? What's that? Maple syrup. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if you were to live in the Canadians. States, I guess, yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, if you were wondering about the top 10, uh, top 10 was, uh, number 10 was Massachusetts, and then Colorado, uh, then Montana, and Iowa went tied, uh, and then after that, you had uh, Washington and New Hampshire, hmm. and then you had North Dakota, Minnesota, Hawaii, and of course, number one, Vermont. Hmm. Yeah, Vermont apparently also has the second lowest crime rate. Uh, uh, across the U.S. Also not surprised. 77% of uh, people in Vermont feel, quote, active and productive, which is the highest in the nation. That's wow. awesome. If you can put up so, with their winters, I guess, you know, yeah. that's the one thing. But if you can put up with but the it's winters... it's such a great. socialist thing. <laughs> it's a beautiful state. Really, yes. yeah, it's lovely. So, way to go. Maybe maybe that Bernie Sanders zone does something. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you guys hear that uh, Justin Bieber... We haven't heard about him for a long time. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, yes, but well, he decided to challenge Tom Cruise 
to oh. UFC fight. But I heard about it's this. so it's such an <laughs> obvious ploy because he's releasing new music. Well, you know, it's he just literally has a new album ready to come out. I don't like, I don't understand why this he's 25. He's a 25 year old kid, right? Mm-hmm. And also why he decides to pick on a 56 year old oh, man it, to pick it. And you know what? My money's on Tom Cruise. I'm sorry. Oh, of course. <laughs> I I honestly believe 100 percent that it's to have people like focusing on him so oh, yeah, that there's course. buzz around him oh, so that course. when he releases his music people will be like oh right Justin Bieber he's crazy yes. let's go listen to his music though his new music is actually really freaking good oh really? yeah I, wasn't sure. I didn't know there, you were a fan well I detest his older music when he's a little tween because <laughs> it's gross but like in the last maybe five years mm-hmm. his music when you hear it on the radio is actually really good well chalk that up to the producers mm-hmm. and they're being able to control him yeah. you know because that's that's where they're all making their living so they've all got some skin in that game yeah. and so, and yeah. i don't know how old he is right now but he might have actually matured a little bit so mm-hmm. uh yeah. moving on um here in canada doug ford the premier of ontario has been using the legendary figure of tommy douglas to promote his conservative uh, government agenda tommy douglas of course was uh, the premier of Saskatchewan. He was also an NDP. Um, the problem is, is <laughs> the grandson of Tommy Douglas is actor Kiefer Sutherland. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Oh. So actor Kiefer, uh, Kiefer uh, Sutherland basically did not like this, and he basically took to Twitter to express uh, what he felt about uh, the premier basically using the uh, the image of his grandfather. And he did not like this. And this is the letter. It says, Mr. Ford, your tweet has recently come to my attention, and I can tell you that you are correct. My grandfather, Tommy Douglas, was fiscally responsible. In addition to balancing the budget of Saskatchewan, he also provided the province with pay of roads, health care, and electricity. He did it all within four years. Contrary to your argument, it was never at the expense of social and human services to those in need. I personally find your comparison to your to uh, of your policies to his offensive. Oh, where's the rest of it? Ah, you gotta find the rest of it. <laughs> Where is it? Oh yes, there you, there you go. I personally find your comparison to his to your, uh, of your policies to his offensive. So I, I can only ask, as the grandson of this man, for you to stop posting his picture and using his name as part of your political agenda. After all, I knew Tommy Douglas, and you, sir, are no Tommy Douglas. Uh, I was no wondering Tommy whether he'd worth it. So it, says, <laughs> yeah. it says, P.S., you're lucky my mom's not active on Twitter. <laughs> oh, good for him. Yes, good yes, indeed. Um, Tommy Douglas, for maybe our American listeners that don't understand who he is, um, he's a legendary politician here because he's also the man who brought socialized medicine to Canada. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. You did what? Give me back. I was homeschooled. Give me back your Canadian card. <laughs> you mean you don't? No, he was actually voted uh, fairly recently. I think it was like in two thousand five or something like that. They did like, they did a contest across Canada saying the greatest Canadian, and they had like people like Wayne Gretzky mm-hmm. and Don Cherry and Terry Fox and Tommy Douglas came out number one. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah, just to give you an idea how much you know that we actually appreciate uh, socialized medicine. Yeah, so, so this is for a, a little bit of information for our American listeners that might not know who this man was. You know, he's the one who, who brought this, this concept of socialized medicine to Canada. And today, if you're a politician and you even try to advocate for getting rid of the healthcare system, you're basically committing political suicide. You know, you, yeah. might, as well, you might as well kill yourself at that point. Well, it's not going to happen. Is it- being so close to America, we can look there and see what happens without it. And we're like, yeah, no, we don't want to be yes. like that. But, you know, we may also think that before that, it was like that, mm-hmm. right? Anyway. Well, I don't think anybody in their right mind would have even believed that that Ford has any similarity or any... Um, um, connection mm-hmm. to anything that Tommy does. I mean, the, the man is just anything that comes... He's our Trump. What yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's, he's exactly... He's a Canadian he's, Trump. They call him mini Trump for, for, yeah. for a good reason. Um, and of course, it kind of disgusts me that the conservative would use somebody who's clearly yeah. not a conservative that's to promote call, their agenda. That's what you call desperate for, yeah, for, for, exactly. for some appreciation. <laughs> It'd be like Donald Trump using Obama to promote his agenda. Yeah, exactly. you know, it's like, it doesn't make a good sense. Good analogy, exactly. Um, 
Peak News also uh, um, reports that uh, some churches in Florida are organizing or have organized a conference for MASA or Make Americans Make America Straight Again. Oh my God! Which of course will coincide with the three-year anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting, which was June twelfth. A couple days ago. Mm -hmm. So did it actually happen? Apparently it did happen. Gross. Have these people no sense of decency? Exactly. It's like, I'm sorry, this is just evil at this point. To do that on purpose, and I don't care how much you say Jesus here, that is evil. That is Mm -hmm. just plain mean. This is apparently a, a movement called the New Independent Fundamentalist Baptist Church. Could they get any more conservative words in there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe they should put New Independent Conservative Fundamentalist Baptist Church. Um, of course, June 12th in 2016, a couple of years ago, uh, 49 were killed and 53 were uh, were injured at the Pulse nightclub. Uh, it's just a disgusting, disgusting way. And these people actually are advocating violence mm-hmm. towards the LGBT community. I mean, any any group that uses a tragedy like that, mm-hmm. you know, for publicity, you know, to try and and uh, promote their agenda, it's more than evil. There's no, no moral. No. I mean, there's just no moral uh, compass to that at all. And I don't want to derive into this conversation because we had no. these conversations before, and we will have these conversations later. But ask yourself this question. Yeah, I know in the United States, a lot of people have like unfeathered free speech. And up here in Canada, we do have some restrictions on free speech. Is it worth having no regulations on free speech to to see something like that? Is it really worth it? Or would you, by instance, say, you know what? These guys are going too far. And this is what we do in Canada, right? You're inciting hate like these people are. No, I'm sorry. No, you cannot do that. This is why I feel our our country is has a better handle on free speech. As much as I love the the idea of unfeathered free speech, I don't think that we are mature enough as a species mm-hmm. to handle it. Yeah. That's the problem. We're just too fucking stupid. Oh, sorry. I don't Pardon know. I mean, that's a, that's a debate you and I can have yes. pretty easily. And like I said, I don't want to yeah. open that no, can no, of worm no, now. No, I'm not. My my can of worms is still <laughs> still got a lock but on it. But we will talk about this for sure, and we will talk about this especially with Seth Andrews when he comes on the show uh, next month or so. Okay. All right, my dear Nancy. Oh, you know what? I, sorry, before I do that, there's one more piece of adv- uh, piece of things I've uh, yeah, piece of something I got to do here. Uh, where's my music? I'm not gonna fit the music. We we got a letter from Doctor Del Rey. Oh. <gasps> And, uh, of course, he's sending us flowers our way. He loves us and everything. Says. But he also is asking us that, uh, says, Kevin and crew, as you know, Recovering from Religion is doing its first kind retreat, first of its kind retreat in September. We would appreciate if uh, you guys would like uh, help us getting the word out. Uh, here's a press release, announce or publicize any way you deem appropriate. Thanks for the help. So basically, yeah. So this is... Uh, if you go to uh, recoveringfromreligion.org, they have their retreat, and uh, this is going to happen. Uh, this is happening today, actually. Mars Hill, North Carolina, June fifteenth. Recovering from Religion proudly presents its list of confirmed special guests to appear the first of its kind fall execution excursion. Sorry, execution. <laughs> <laughs> so, weekend religion recovery experience to be held in a serene retreat, setting in Western North Carolina. Sept- oh, September. 20th to 22nd. Okay, that's oh, when it's okay, happening. okay, no, we're good. Okay, okay, so the release is today. Sorry. So my apologies. I was much be like, wow, you dropped the ball on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the some of the uh, the guests are uh, Sarah Rockdale, which is a creator of the popular YouTube ch- uh, channel Sarah Rockdale. Uh, she covers a wide variety of topics, of course, including religion, recovery, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Mendisa Thomas, a president and founder of Black Non-Believers. Um, Lloyd Evans, which is founder of JWSurvey.org, an online resource aimed at assisting people who have to wish to leave the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, Kenneth Gorham, she's a licensed professional mental health counselor, and she's a, also a former ordained minister turned atheist. Uh, and if you want more information about these guests and all the uh, to attend the resort, you just go to recoveringfromreligion.org um, slash a fall ex. Excursion, not execution. <laughs> slash, uh, I mean, dash 2019. That has to be I will post that fabulous. link to the notes yeah. of the show. That's got to be, I mean, other than the fact that that 
its recovery from religion, and all of those wonderful people are going to, um, you know, guide everybody that's there and make presentations. The setting alone is just out of this world. Mm -hmm. Western North Carolina is gorgeous. It's mountainous. It's green. It, it's just just a lovely place to go. A nice place to recharge your batteries with uh, friends. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, my dear Nancy. Absolutely. You oh. got a top ten for us? I do. Perfect. Okay, so there are times when you're looking for a gift or you feel as though you need an appliance of some kind. And so you go to the store and you look at all the different appliances. And most of them are pretty practical, you know, toasters and refrigerators and, you know, just Body disposers. waffle makers. You know, you, 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 you get a, a few. But you have to kind of laugh a little bit because there are appliances that are so horrific and so funny that you really wonder why in the world a company would ever manufacture them. I'm already so, laughing at this. Uh, so here's, t I'm going to go to 13 because the 13th that was on this particular list is just so outrageous I had to <laughs> include it. So these are, these are the, the ones top 13. that are, they are so bad. Um, it's, you save your money, but it's good to know about them. Number thirteen. Save your money. I don't think I want to buy these things. Probably. You, you may want to, Kevin. <laughs> you may want to buy. You never know. <laughs> Number thirteen is a monogrammed barbecue branding iron. It's oh like, my god! It's actually hilarious. You can order it, and it can say like "steaks by Kevin," <laughs> or you know, ten tender. You know, tender treats by... So you, you can know. brand your steak? You can brand your steak when you're having a barbecue and put your name, however, or little monogram so that when everybody has their steaks, they know that you <laughs> made their steaks. You know, or you can do it so that no one will eat your steak. You know, the, the funny thing is, I just this is not actually so bad of an idea. Because think about it this way. You got ten steaks on the barbecue and three of them are rare and two of them are well done. And whose steak is whose? So you can brand the name on who's this is this is Christina's steak and this is Nancy's steak. There you go. Yeah, God forbid you should talk to somebody and say, "How do you want your steak there?" No, no, but I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, maybe, no. Maybe, I'd maybe it's just me. I would right. lose track of them after a while. If if you want one, you go to Amazon.com or maybe Amazon got and put in monogram barbecue branding iron, and you can get them with whatever initials you'd like to have. Okay, I, I'm going I knew to do there, that right away. I knew there'd be one that you'd like. Okay, <laughs> number 12 is Bruno the Smart Trash Can. No longer is it, you know, you can just put your trash in there. This is a smartphone-enabled trash can where you get a little... Um, uh, a compartment on top that has the bags and if you're running low on bags you can connect with your smartphone and it'll tell you when you go to the store if you need to buy more bags that saves you from actually having to look at the trash wow. can to see yeah That's it, it also has an integrated vacuum so anything that you can you know <laughs> throw underneath it it'll suck it up okay that's kind of cool what if you have to want to have a deep philosophical conversation with your garbage can? can you do I that? think you, I think you can. It has a motion sensing lid and a filtration system, and it's only two hundred bucks. There we go if for a trash can. Garbage can, play left of the valley. And it has a name, Bruno. Bruno, Bruno, play yeah. left of the valley. <laughs> so would you buy that? Probably not. <laughs> okay, all right. We'll say saved you two hundred bucks there. <laughs> Number eleven is a mini donut factory. Oh, now you got and me. You can now make. Now you got yeah. me. It just, that's what it is. It takes up, you know, about 18 inches or so of space, and you make the, do don't go to Timmy's anymore. Get, oh, you can make your that. own teeny tiny little itsy bitsy little. Mini donuts are awesome. I have a mini donut 113 pan. bucks for your mini. How often would you use it? Just about every day. I, I mean, if you were running, maybe if you were running a. A, uh, Come on, if you guys arrived here in the morning and had coffee and mini donuts, oh my gosh, yeah, but, would, but I, would I not be the best host ever? Would you already are. And if you could make 25 at a time, what are you going to do with the leftovers uh, eat them, in the eat morning? Them. Are you awake enough to make that Tw many donuts? 25 would be for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. I have to make another batch for you guys. Well, okay. I, I can I can tell you're going to be busy on Amazon. Buying it. Okay, number 10. This is kind of cute if you think about it. This is a desk 
mini vacuum. It's actually shaped like a little vacuum cleaner. Oh, and my it God. it goes into oh the God. USB, and you can vacuum your... <laughs> It has a little vacuum noise and everything. It's only so 14 cute. bucks. So if you want to have, if you're OCD and you really want to clean your the oh, desktop. Wow. God, that's so cute. Yeah, I know. It's wonderful. It's Let 14 me. bucks. We have to get one now. Just yeah, like, you know. I mean, that's a, that's a cheapie, right? For 14 bucks, you can do that. <laughs> Okay, I, I kind of, it was so cute when you see the picture of it. I mean, it is it just a tiny little hoover sitting <laughs> Okay, number nine is a s'more maker. Oh my <sighs> gosh, that sounds I mean, amazing. give up the campfire and going out there and having your friends. This you put, and it's kind of a funny little thing because it makes two at a time. Mm. And it's really strange, strange looking. It's 12 bucks. Okay. So... A s'more would you maker. make? Would you want to make s'mores inside? Uh, no, I. They require a fireplace. Yeah, I mean the whole thing about s'mores is that you're out with yeah. people at the campfire. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, know, you guys have heard me say that that one about the uh, the uh, the program they have now for ex prostitutes to give uh, graham crackers and chocolate and marshmallows to kids. It's called s'mores. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's here's a Kirsten and Christina may like this one. This is a smartphone controlled water fountain for cats or dogs. There we go. It That's actually amazing. it's a reservoir, but it'll actually bubble up. That's so cool. It does, it, it's a it, it promises you to keep tabs on your kitty or your puppy and on from your smartphone. Mm. It controls the amount of water that'll bubble up, and it actually bubbles. So it's a pretty substantial-looking thing. It's only twenty-seven mm. bucks, but um, I don't know. Would you think even think of getting a, mm. a bubble? A, I, I a would. I like the concept of one that like bubbles up because it keeps the water moving and fresh. Yeah. But I don't yeah, think I would. It's a submersible I pump. don't think I would need one that's connected to my iphone no my my my, uh no i mean that's the whole thing is you know how um Mm -hmm. you know being able to to micromanage your whole life from your smartphone Mm -hmm. they do they do have these uh, these uh, things where it's a bit of a fountain but it it just the water just recycles back and forth it always pumps up and comes down because it's, it's for cat cats prefer running water apparently yeah. They don't like like stagnant water. They they, they like the, that's why they're always drinking from the tap or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, as soon as it you, runs. You can take a look at it at Amazon. It's a smart smartphone controlled kitty water fountain, but it's for any kind of animal. Number seven is just silly. It's thirty five bucks and it's a baseball bat. It's actually a pepper grinder. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! <laughs> that's I mean, hilarious. Yeah, I mean, it's just you got to really be. You got to be a real sports fan for that one. Is it yeah. full size? Yeah. Okay. I hope no- not. Is it really a full size bat? <laughs> yeah. Well, no. Okay. It's not a full size bat. It's a, <laughs> it's a it, big pepper grinder. <laughs> yeah. It's thirty five bucks. I mean, for a pepper grinder, forget it. Okay. Number six is an eye kettle, and it's a, a re- you can start your water boiling <gasps> from anywhere Ooh, from your smartphone. Yes, this I need. And you can do it on a, you can do it from the iPhone, you can do it Android, you can actually do it from Alexa. Oh, hold on. Oh, and God. Google Assistant. This is what you need? I want this so bad. What are you, what are you, oh, so you can't bad, walk up to the kettle and push the button? Oh, but then you have to you have to go to the kitchen and turn on, and then you have to go back to the living room to sit down to wait for it. Oh, my and you have to get God. The- if okay. I could just be like Alexa, or turn do- on the water kettle, and can it? Can you? Can this one do it to a specific temperature? Uh, I think so, oh, but I'm, those I'm, it would best. be boiling. It would be boiling, yeah. which is what 130. Well, First world problems. Well, here. some some of them right. you can do for I, different teas. They do best with different temperatures. So you could be like Alexa, turn water, turn on the kettle to like 110 degrees. I guess Best Buy oh. knew what they were doing because there's your market. I which, want okay, it. here's the, know what to get her for Christmas. Okay. I want it so the, bad. All right, here's the. Here's the kicker. Would you pay 150 bucks for it? Probably. Wow. Then it's at Best Buy. You may go and look. Don't it's tell called Eye Kettle, small eye. Okay. Eye Kettle. Oh my gosh. You know what to okay. get for Christmas? Not in no, line. Okay, it'd only it'd be better if it was a coffee maker though. Okay, oh well here's God. a coffee maker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a solid gold coffee maker. No. Believe it or not, Ew. Walmart sells them, and they look like a Victorian um, 
uh, coffee maker. So they have this real vintage look at, and, and style. It, and it is, it's solid gold, 120 bucks. Yeah, no, I wouldn't buy that. No. No, no you'd rather spend the extra 30 and get the eye kettle. Yes. Yes. Got, oh. I don't need a gold. I'm not Donald Trump. Yeah. We don't do gold. <laughs> send, that to, send that to Trump. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Number four is an automated floss dispenser. It's got little batteries in it. It'll go on your mirror. And the, here's the funny thing about it. It's this LED light on it, and it'll smile when you dispense. But if you haven't used it for a while, it'll frown at you. Oh, oh my gosh. God. That's hilarious. That, is, that would be perfect for kids. That's that uh, that's 26 bucks, and it's at smilepronto.com. Now, I looked up all of these. Yeah. These aren't anything that I, you know, that, that were at one As a matter of fact, Nancy has all of these in her home. I, ha- <laughs> I, I bought one of each. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that one would actually be perfect for, like, kids, if, like, to have in your bathroom to make sure that they're flossing. Oh. Does, it, does it tell you how much it dispenses, or...? No, I think you you just push the button and and it dispenses a certain amount. But if you want more, you oh. just keep pushing the the button. Okay, all right. Number three is an egg holder, just you know, like a regular egg carton, but it syncs with your smartphone to tell you how many eggs you have left. What? So if you go to the store, you can use this app to check in and say, oh, I've only got six more <laughs> eggs. And it'll also tell you which eggs are good or bad. Oh, God. And, but it's only 10 bucks. But so still. if you want... And, and finally, I found one that you're both incredulous. I got three people incredulous. <laughs> Open your damn fridge. That's right. That's right. You and really got to be a big egg fan for that. But now that people have smartphones, I mean, that's it. Personal interaction is over. It's just you and your smartphone. So when you're using your smartphone to put a fork but in ten, your mouth. Ten bucks, ten bucks isn't bad for a, a gag gift. You know, if you're, that would but, be a good gag would gift. But yes. would somebody use it? They would use it for a week. Until they buy the next carton of eggs. And yeah, done. yeah. And how many apps? By this time, how many apps have you got on your phone? Nine hundred and thirty. So you you run out of room. Okay, here we go. We're down to the last two. Mm-hmm. Here's what Kevin the, the, the gift because I yep. can't see. This is an electric martini maker. Oh my ah. god. And it shakes like a malt, you know, like a malted milk maker, but it's a martini maker so no longer do you have to actually get the exercise in your arms by doing Shaking this. Shaking not stirred. A hundred bucks at Amazon. Right. I wouldn't Amazon is accepting an all the of- all these martinis. Kidding? I would just all take these martinis a- I have. I right? just take that to work and put it in the paint mixer. Yeah. Th- that's what it's like. It's like a paint mixer but this is supposedly just for martinis but I think you could probably use it for a lot of different stuff. Oh, I bet you could. Okay. And the f- number one on the list is a quesadilla maker. Looks like a <laughs> it looks like a waffle maker, but it's just how often would you make quesadillas in order, you know, Person to have? Would use it a lot. But how much room have you got in your cupboard to be able to? I would have, just use a damn pan. Yeah, it's thirty bucks. I would just use a damn pan. Yeah, so I guess you could make what apple turnovers in it as well as I guess quesadillas. So. Yeah. I mean, you could probably look at it and figure out different things that you could make in it, like what you can make in a waffle iron, all those sorts of different things. Yeah, but this is just dedicated to. Anyway, anybody ever see a, an appliance that hasn't been mentioned that you thought was really dumb? Probably. Uh, not that yeah. I can think of. Well, I, I, I like some of these uh, appliances that are kind of weird. We, we talked several weeks ago about an exercise bike that was also a washing machine. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I find those kind of hilarious at the same time. You almost want to try them, but there's no way in hell I would do, always be doing my laundry yeah. in an exercise bike. Yeah. Well, they had another one on the list, but I didn't include it because I didn't understand it. It was a battery-operated fork that you can put whatever food you like, but it was an aroma ther- like an aromatherapy appliance where you could add different aromas to it while you were eating just to see how a, a like chocolate would be with your 
vanilla cookies. So while you're having a cookie yep. or something, you you put a drop of aroma. I mean, it was so complex. And the people that tried it said we we thought it, we could understand it, but they couldn't even understand well, the direction. Know, I, I could see use for that because anybody who's had my cooking really wish it would smell like something else. Yeah, that, so I, I could mine see too. That, I could. <laughs> <laughs> It would smell edible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Oh, my dear Kirsten, you ready to make us laugh a bit? Oh, yes, I am. All right. <clears throat> Actually, on the line of food, Rick Wiles claims that meatless burgers are a satanic plot meant to rewrite human DNA and create a race of soulless creatures. Just what I was thinking. Just was yeah, just when we were thinking of getting one of those meatless go well, beyond burger, beyond meat burgers. I know. Now we're just going to turn into soulless machines again. Yep. Oh. I think religion did that for them. <laughs> Good one. Right Wing Watch reports that Wilds believes that plant based alternatives to meat and dairy products is part of a satanic plot to alter human DNA so that people can no longer worship God. <laughs> Appearing on his program earlier this week, he said. When you go to your favorite fast food restaurant, you're going to be eating a fake hamburger. You're going to go to the grocery store and buy a pound of fake hamburger or fake steak, and you won't know what it, that it was grown in some big corporation's laboratory. This is the nightmare world that they are taking us into. They're changing God's creation. Why? Because they want to be God. He continued... God is an environmentalist. He takes it v- this very seriously. He created this planet. He creates. He created the universe, and he wa- he's watching these Luciferians destroy this planet, destroy the animal kingdom, destroy the plant kingdom, change human DNA. Why? They want to change human DNA so you can't be born again. That's where they're going with this. Oh, so, to change so, the DNA of humans so it will be impossible for a human to be born again. So being born again depends on your DNA now? Yes, so. Oh, they want to create a race of soulless creatures on this planet. Oh. Okay, so I have some some questions about, like, his Several. Wording. So he talks about, like, the meatless burger, but then he talks about, like, the meat or be grown in a laboratory. So I'm like, is he talking about meatless burgers or, like, lab-grown meat? Right. Like, yeah, they're two, they're, they're two different things. Yeah, very different things. They are two different things. things. Yes. That we know they're two and, different things. You know, things. if God is an environmentalist, he probably would be for the meatless burgers. Yeah. Well, I, I personally am all for uh, lab-grown meat because, hello, yeah. that's like the perfect thing for everyone. At the same time, I, I find it funny how, you know, the more pro- progressive we become as a society, and let's face it, this is the slow march, but it is heading mm-hmm. that way, the more specific being a good Christian becomes. Because yes. now it's not just being conservative. Now you have to be conservative and a carnivore to be a Christian, <laughs> yeah. right? Because otherwise you're not part of the flock. So I yeah. wonder how specific it's going to get mm-hmm. at some point. Right, I mean, since when is God against veggies? No. Yeah. Also, I don't think he understands DNA that you can't change your DNA by eating. Oh, no. you're getting in way... Oh. Yeah, but, you know, There's God a... works in mysterious ways. <laughs> there she goes. That is the bringing... answer to all. Bringing common sense and logic. Oh, why would you do such a thing? Yeah. I don't know. It's all those meatless burgers I eat. They've just so changed my brain. So who's tried one? Me, actually. I've tried the A&W one. So how did you like it? Um, I actually really liked it. So if, if you... <laughs> no, I think... Dog's making a mess. Well, anyway, while we clean up the mess of the dog, let's take a quick break. Yeah. And when we come back, we'll be talking to Hertzy Hertz of the Minnesota making, Atheist. Stop making that big of a mess. <laughs> Don't give him a chance. All right. We'll be right back. What's up, heathens? I'm the Godless Engineer, and it would be great if you could join me on my YouTube channel. Over there, we post videos every day. On Mondays, we normally post a response video of some kind. Tuesdays, we post our daily Bible podcasts that I record with KC. Wednesdays, we read comments. Thursdays and Fridays is conspiracy theory and flat earth stuff. And we have a new segment that runs Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays that is Today I Learned from KC. Hi, y'all. So please join us over on the YouTube channel, Godless Engineer, where we always stand up and use our voice. In a world torn apart by a lack of reason. Or at least. 
and I think it should be religion treated with ridicule and hatred and contempt. And I claim that right. In the morning. Hi, everybody. This is Robert Stanley from the Right to Reason podcast. And if you subscribe now, you'll get free... More about the broadcast at the right to reason.com. century, if emissions keep rising, the average temperature on Earth could go up another four to eight degrees. What I'm saying is the planet's on fucking fire. There are a lot of things we could do to put it out. Are any of them free? No, of course not. Nothing's free, you idiots. Grow the fuck up. You're not children anymore. I didn't mind explaining photosynthesis to you when you were 12, but you're adults now, and this is an actual crisis. Got it? I don't know what Well, our next guest is one of the Minnesota atheists. Her presence all over the social media is impactful. And one of the hosts of Atheist Talk. She's a snappy dresser and a snazzy dancer. Hertzie Hurst, thank you so much for coming in Left of the Valley. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm still laughing at you saying that my social presence is... is what did you describe it as? Impactful. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Boy, it's the first time we had her. We never had her. See. Yeah. That's great. She might regret this. Um, no. Nah. She has gotten to enjoy our dogs by proxy. She can't. So. It's radio. She can't see the dogs. Yeah, but she's. We've described She them feels to their her. presence. Yeah, okay. We know she feels their exactly. presence. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So no matter what, that'll make this. This day show good. has gone to the dogs already. <laughs> Hertzie, for, for those of our audience that might know, not know who you are, despite your fabulous online presence, maybe you'd be so kind to give us a quick bio as to who you are. Awesome. Um, so I'm Hertzie Hertz. I'm from Minnesota, which would make sense because I am part of the Minnesota Atheists. I'm on their board as their chair right now. Though, let's see, when are elections again? <laughs> um Let's see. So I'm on the chair. I'm also the executive producer of our radio show, Atheist Talk. And then I have had an offshoot personal show, Hertzy Talks, but it's been on hiatus for almost, oh, I think about a year now. What? So we demand talk. that returns. <laughs> we demand it now. I've actually been debating trying to work out ways to do more, just shorter things. So That's we'll fair. see. A convergence has to happen first. Until then, I am so booked, it's not even funny. <laughs> yeah, we understand that all too well. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, convergence is in about two weeks. So I have two weeks to hustle my butt. Oh, so we better keep going with this interview, though. <laughs> so tell us about the Minnesota Atheist, for those of us that might not be super, super familiar, especially for our Canadian audience. All right. So um, you, I'm guessing you all know who Minnesota is. Minnesota is, is the ambassador to Canada. Yes. If you all take over Minnesota, there would probably be not mon not much change. I think the socialized healthcare would be the biggest change and and even that we actually have a pretty robust um robust places for that. So Minnesota Atheists is the group. Um, it was founded, I believe, in 1991. Before that, there was a American Atheist chapter. But when they disbanded the local chapters, the group, their own mantle, and just kind of kept going with it. So it's been going on for about 30 years. Uh, the board right now is pretty awesome, where we've got some pretty cool initiatives. For example, this year, we're going to have our first float in the Pride Parade. Ooh. Yay! Yep. Um, I mentioned Convergence, which is a sci-fi, fantasy, anime, gaming convention that oh, happens in the nice. Twin Cities. It's about six or 7,000 geeks in a hotel. <laughs> I'm there. Yeah, I'm sorry it's, to think so, you guys are still here. I mean, you'd be gone to there. Oh, yeah. Um, and we, this will be our second year doing what's called a room party in there where we have the magical school classroom. Did you similar say room to the magical party or school bus. Party? Hmm? Did you say room party or Roomba party? 
room party. Oh, okay. So there's there's certain rooms in the hotel that have parties, and people can come in and out and look at what's going on. Uh, we have science experiments during the day, and then we're going to have secular and science salons at night. But there's no Roomba whatsoever. No, because no. we actually put down plastic on the floor. I was kind of disappointed. I was looking forward to a Roomba party. Ah, but come on, science <laughs> experiment. Yes, of course. Science experiment. Tell us more. Uh, well, last year we had a banana that if you made the connection with the banana, so it had like two electrodes, uh, it would get a little dinosaur to jump because you were completing the connection and it was like clicking a mouse. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> And this, this is usually open to the general public, or you you has a, uh, you have a specific, a specific niche you're trying to uh, attract with that. Not Wait, necessarily just banana? atheists. No, no, <laughs> with the science experiments. Well, with the room party, um, I mean, we're first off, we're just trying to you know make sure kids and parents and such you know understand the love and wonder that is science. Um, and then, admittedly, there is a part of it, which is, oh, by the way, there's this wonderful and amazing group mm -hmm. in Minnesota. Uh, we also will have pamphlets and such out for Camp Quest North, which is the Minnesota Iowa Camp Quest, which has two weeks in Minnesota and one week in Iowa. And I've heard a rumor that they might be thinking about adding a fourth week. Ooh. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's totally cool. Oh, yeah. We need to have a Left at the Valley touring van and just, you know, oh, just take the show on the I, road. I would love to do that. I know. I would love to do that. But yeah. I, I just, just take a year off and visit everybody. As soon as I win the lottery. Okay. Well, that will happen. We'll hold you to it. <laughs> yes, actually, totally. <laughs> but so, you've got to buy tickets. <laughs> Visit Minnesota the weekend of July 4th, because that's when Convergence usually is. Mm -hmm. And it's it's amazing. There's so many things to do. Oh, <laughs> man, it sounds great. And you also, okay, I was going to say, that's just our room. The whole convention is panels and gaming and movies and all sorts of stuff. A good time. Yeah. And oh, where, where can they get the tickets if they want to attend those? Uh, if, you, if they want to attend, I think tickets, online tickets are closed now because we're getting so close. So it would have to be at the door. Okay. Um, it's going it, to, and unfortunately, that means they are probably the most expensive. For four days, it's about, I want to say it's going to be about $120. Ooh, for four that's days? Not bad. That's not bad. I know. For four days, that's actually pretty decent. Uh -huh. um, they also have con room where, or con suite, which will have some snacks and stuff for people to eat so you really get your money's worth out of this yeah. um, tickets usually for next year will go on sale on October and if you google Convergence Minnesota you should be able to find it I don't have the website in my head um, and then it's at the downtown Hyatt this mm -hmm. year which is new well, usually what... we were in Bloomington and so this is our first year in this new hotel so I'm really excited fantastic when, when we're doing the show make sure to send me the link so I can post that in the notes of the show for our audience if they want to know more will do okay, perfect and on top of that you also host a show I do I'm the executive producer of Atheist Talk which has been a little on and off for the last 10 years um, it was introduced as an idea I think it was August I was talking to Dan Barker from the Freedom From Religion Foundation about putting their show on the airwaves and I'm pretty sure it was Dan Barker, and he basically turned and said, why don't you do your own show? <laughs> <laughs> and we actually found a, a radio station that was willing to host us. Seriously. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah. So we are live um, every every week. We're live. Um, we have a group of amazing volunteers. And, of course, I have to shout out to Maddie Love, who is super amazing and helps a lot. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie Zavan, who is also super helpful with all our stuff. Um, and, yeah, like this week we have Mendisa Thomas on tomorrow morning. Last week we had Andrew Seidel. Oh, nice. Nice. Yes. Um, sometimes we'll also have just members of the group. Like I, I did a panel once about going to a religious college mm -hmm. and we got different people. So one person was from St. Thomas, which is a Catholic college, but it's not really religious anymore. Hmm. Like it's pretty, it's, it's, run by the catholic church but you don't have to be catholic to be there and it's kind of like on the side i'm, I'm personally i'm finding a little sidebar here uh, i was raised catholic myself 
Um, I was I was really stunned when I moved out west and I saw the evangelicals really bash on Catholics. I was really stunned by that. I thought, wow, really? You guys are taking this like way too seriously. And and uh, um, it seems to me that the Catholics are much more prone to quote unquote evolve, if I can use that word, in within their faith to adapt to the new reality of of science as compared to the evangelical movement. Well, and it's interesting because if you look at um, some of the scientific things that we found, they act, many of them have actually come from Catholic monks and priests. Uh, absolutely. Uh, George Lemaitre like is the first theory. one that comes to mind, right? Yeah. Um, so anyways, so we had that group. We had the, you know, so we'll have stuff from people who are just random members of Minnesota atheists and such, and that's pretty awesome, too. Uh, it's on Sunday mornings on KTNF, the progressive voice of Minnesota, AM 950. We also stream live online via the radio station's website, which I'll get you. And then we also have a pod. It also goes out into a podcast. Mm -hmm. So if you can't catch it for any reason, you can always so subscribe to the podcast Atheist Talk. And let's see, we also have a Patreon where we do extended interviews, and those are really fun because that's where we can swear. <laughs> nice. Now, yes. the real question is, how come we were not invited on that show yet? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, I thought for... Did I not have you on yet? No. Well, if we're kidding. Well, show, what are the odds that you guys have known us? <laughs> Obviously, we need to change. This. Absolutely, absolutely, we need. We absolutely need to make an appearance. It's at your own risk and perils, of course, as you can tell by now. <laughs> so, so in, yeah. within within you guys have been doing the show for ten years. Have you been producing for ten years as well? No, okay. no. I let's see. I figured out the whole atheism thing probably about six years ago. Okay, um, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, so, and then I joined up with Minnesota Atheists about five years ago and started helping with the show about two years ago. It's, it's something we kind of have in common because the Left of Valley did also a stint. We did a stint on radio ourselves. It was a Ooh. local university radio, CIVL 101.7 FM. Uh, but, you know, anyway, that didn't quite work out. But we were on the radio live for a while there. That was kind of fun. Uh, but the, the, the question I want to ask you is in your um, growth in your apostasy, uh, you said you've been doing this for six years, so let's 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 go six years. Have you seen much changes within the movement itself? You know, did atheism have a much different flavor when you came out as it does today for you? I think definitely yes, but I think that in part it's the atheist movement, and then it's also in part my knowledge of things and mm -hmm. things in the atheist movement. So, you know, you kind of go wide-eyed into it and going, whoa, there's all this stuff, and Google is helping me find all these things, and I'm starting to listen to podcasts about it. Uh, one of the ones I started with is a local podcast called Geeks Without God, who are absolutely amazing. It's three geeky comedians. <laughs> um, I love them. Um, but, you know, I was reading Friendly Atheist and all that stuff. And then as I continued and such, I, how do I say that? You, you kind of start pulling back the curtain. Totally. Mm. You know, and, and some of that stuff is just as things have come out and just being like, really? That guy? <sighs> <laughs> And then we're all imitating David Somali for a moment, which is a little <laughs> awkward because that's one of the ones who make me sigh. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, do you think that's a... Um, uh, how do I put this? For lack of a better way, if those quote-unquote small divisions that we're seeing, do you think that's a, a, a result of atheism itself or is it more a result that most atheists seem to be leftist politically? Um... See, I actually disagree with that statement. I don't. I wouldn't say most atheists are leftists because I think. I I think. I don't. Okay, I don't have numbers to back it up. But. Yeah, I think there are probably a lot of atheists that are like conservatives, well, but I think of that we just know more people who are leftists because we're leftists. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's There's, ask that question. You th you feel that most atheists are necessarily left or right, or you think it's evenly balanced? What do you think? What do you see oh. in your neck of the woods? See, well, 
Let's see, the Minnesota Atheist Group, um, we are a 501c3 tax-deductible organization and therefore do not get into politics very much yeah. unless it's regarding the separation of church and state. And in that case, we don't care who is you know, supporting the separation. We'll support it with them. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, this is a personal opinion and does not reflect those of the Minnesota Atheist Organization. She's been through this before. You can tell. <laughs> She's it's not part of my Easter. radio spiel. <laughs> I actually have a line. I'm like, and this is the, you know, the opinion of that of the guest and host only and do not reflect those of the Minnesota mm-hmm. Atheist Organization. Yes. Um, I feel that that a lot of the divisions actually aren't necessarily a political thing um, in the in the sense of it's depending on whether or not you're going to be respecting of somebody's rights and somebody's autonomy because if we look at you know if we look at some of these divisions it's things like Lawrence Krauss or you know um, David Silverman people who have done something and have you know credible credible accusations lobbied at them and you know people are like oh it can't be and it's like yes yes it can yeah yeah you know we cannot put people up on a pedestal like that yeah it, we, we don't it doesn't work we don't want to see people that we admire a lot all of a sudden fall you mm-hmm. know, we, we don't want to see the hero fall but it happens and i think that is is a part of it i think there are those who are um i'm just going to say the more assholey type who are latching on to those who who can't see this fall and basically are feeding them a whole lot of rhetoric Mm -hmm. and it's if you think about it it's um I, i kind of feel like it's almost like the incel group where they're catching these people at the right time mm-hmm. and stroking the egos and such and feeding them the words they want. Mm-hmm. Just for the record here, as soon as you said assholey, Nancy looked straight at me directly. No, no, we all <laughs> looked at you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, feel under attack here slightly. We're just joking. <laughs> <laughs> or are we? <laughs> so, so... Minnesota sounds very much, I've never been to Minnesota myself, but it sounds very much like a place that I would almost feel at home. You know, it sounds, you know, besides not quite as Canadian as as we are, but what else can you tell me about Minnesota and how they view um, atheism as a whole? Do you think it's a, something that's on the rise in Minnesota? Because it's, it's obviously under attack in other states. So there's, and this is, and I would say that I don't know how much of this is Minnesota specific mm-hmm. or just kind of the the north. There, there are people in Minnesota and a couple other states that we that people will say we're part of the Midwest, and it's like we're really not though. <laughs> we are we're, we're the north because <laughs> you have like Missouri and Kentucky, and that's kind of more the Midwest where it's like in the middle, and it's like the middle middle, and then I think it's. Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wisconsin, and Michigan make up what we kind of consider north. Okay, I gotta look at a I gotta look at a map here because I'm trying to picture where Minnesota. Okay, oh there we go. Oh yeah, so you guys are right beside Lake Ontario, uh, Lake uh, Superior. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess you, you're considered somewhat north. No, it is. Yeah. For the U.S., we're north. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you're talking to Canadians, right? Obviously. I know, I know. Which is why I said, seriously, just just adopt us, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll, work, well, you know, we, all you have to remember is hockey's better than baseball, and we have stronger beer, and you're pretty much there already. Yep. Uh, we, <laughs> we oh, and are... always say sorry. <laughs> we can see it. Minnesota already is there. Our apologies and your apologies are so close. It is. Do you apologize if you bump into a table? No, that's Sorry. just you, dear. No, there's a lot of Canadians that do that. No, I'm there's pretty, not. It's a stereotype for a reason, Kevin. <laughs> Especially if somebody's sitting at the table, I'll be like, "Sorry." Yeah. Well, no, see, I, I say sorry to the actual inanimate object. Uh, and the, uh, has the table offended me today? <laughs> <laughs> you deserve it, table. I mean, here, here, here's a really wild thought. You, when you talk about not so much Michigan, but when you talk about North Dakota, you talk about Minnesota, you talk about states that predominantly began with Scandinavian 
immigrants. I mm -hmm. wonder whether or not that has anything to do with the amount of uh, prog progress or the, the, the progressive politics that there are in, in those particular states. What do you think, Hertzie? I, I actually, to a point, do, um, especially when it comes to some of the more secular pieces. Um, in Minnesota specifically, I can't speak as much for the other states because I don't go there very often. <laughs> Minneapolis is all I need most days. <laughs> um, but in Minnesota, it's very rare for somebody to ask about your religion. It's very, you know, it's very rare for somebody to ask, like, what church do you go to? And I know those are very common questions in the South. <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, it's like I have not been asked about where my morals come from because even people who know that I'm an atheist, that's not a question they care about, uh -huh. <laughs> you know. Hmm. Uh, I think the biggest debate that I've had, you know, bet you know, with me and a coworker, was whether or not technically I'm an atheist or whether or not I'm technically agnostic because but those are different things. Oh yeah, I, I <laughs> and the debate was a philosophically type, which I'm not also not very good at. <laughs> um, but you know, it was in good, it was in good faith. It yeah. was good. Yeah, you know, it was a uh, respectful. And we don't see a ton of, we don't see a lot of, of that heavy issues of you have to go to church. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, I guess, just a Minnesotan thing. It's like, okay, you do you. Just don't, you know, go off and kill anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. sort of very Canadian. Well, you, you don't have a majority of the Southern Baptist Convention folks <laughs> up there. You know, the minute you go to the South and you walk out your door, it's like, oh, well, what church do you go to? Come to mine. You know. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we have yeah. a. There's a lot of Lutherans. Yeah. Um, which I see a lot of Lutherans, a fair amount of Methodists. There are some Baptists and some, you know, the big church evangelical stuff. Um, but even, you know, I actually, speaking of Kevin, when you were talking about uh, running into the evangelicals, don't ask why, when I was 18 ish years old, I decided to go to an Assemblies of God college for nine months. Okay, I gotta ask why. You can't just throw that out there like that and me not ask why. I don't know. <laughs> That's why I say it. I'm like, I don't, I do not know what Just a rebellious me. phase. <laughs> just, it was and I, I read the rules and I was just like, this is the biggest load of crap and I've already said yes. Damn it. <laughs> By that point, I had already started going to Rocky Horror Picture Show and was, you know, starting to understand some of that leftist stuff and LGBT and like just seeing the stuff at that college I was like oh hell no this is this is wrong so where most people went into college and they're like oh I had this great experience and such I was like nope <laughs> It turned me into an eighth it helped turn me into an atheist on so many levels and none of them were good <laughs> All right, so, so is Minnesota very culturally diverse, or is it like mostly a whole bunch of Caucasians? Uh, I'd say that there, I mean, there is there is a fair number of Caucasians. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that is the the dominant culture. Um, we do actually have a pretty diverse culture as well because there's a lot of there's a ton of farms around here. Mm -hmm. So there is a large Hispanic population. Oh. Really? That has been coming in. Um, I don't have any of the numbers, so oh, you're right. just going to have to work with me on that. Um, I know that Hmong refugees have built homes here. Um, there's some Arabic. In fact, the school near me has been talking about, or not talking about, they actually, I think they approved it. Um, one of their second languages is now going to be Arabic. Wow. Yeah, because the Arabic population in my neighborhood, they were like, you know, and then there's actually an Arabic school about a block or so away from me. It's a charter school. Oof. That feels like it's going to be a, not another black school, but the Arabic thing. I think it's going to become a, well, I don't know. I don't know how people react to the whole Islam thing in Minnesota. Um, uh, mixed. There's yeah. some who are just like, you know, that's their thing. They're not doing anything. Don't care. Um, I do know that, and I don't know if it, the charter school is connected to this other charter school because I read about, up about it at one point. There was a charter school that people were saying was crossing the separation of church and state, yeah. and it was shut down. It was an Arabic school, and of course we know that that can be 
very, very racially motivated. Yes. Um, I'm really hoping that doesn't happen to this one because the kids that, you know, it's like I see the kids playing out there and I think it's just absolutely adorable. Yeah, it's just going to depend on the teaching and the curriculum, right? If they actually, they're actually just speaking and teaching Arabic, then by all means, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know, if they, they, they're using that to slip in a bit of Mohammed there, then yeah, <laughs> we have yeah. a problem. I, so I, I took a look at the school calendar out of just curiosity, and they are taking days that are, you know, they take their school holidays do revolve around the Muslim calendar, but I'm mm-hmm. looking going... Most schools revolve around the Christian calendar. Yeah. How is this any different if all the kids and all the everybody is going to be taking those days off anyways? Might as well just close the school down. Yeah, we'll probably have a visit from Alex Jones. Hang it's Sharia law. You know? okay, oh, he could. Like I said, the school is really close to me. He can come on by, and I'll meet up with him. <laughs> <laughs> I pay for that. Yeah, I mean they, they do the same with the, uh, the, the the Jewish, you know, congregations. They take off on their holidays, and that's fine. I mean, there shouldn't be a, any you know, concern yeah. about any. Of it. So, how many atheists are in the Minnesota atheist group? Oh, I was going to say that depends on whether you're looking at our meetup, our Facebook, or our dues-paying members. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. You managed to get some people to pay dues? Yeah, yes, actually. And it um, worked? My God. I'm going to ask you, what's your, what's your trick? I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, we did have this really cool party where if you were a new dues-paying member, you got $10 off. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was an end-of-the-world party that happened on June 8th because oh the end gosh, of the world was June amazing. 9th. We should do end-of-the-world parties. Yeah. I mean, they happen they're, they're, they're all on a regular basis anyway. What's the every, next one? Every couple of I have no idea, actually. We haven't heard from them in a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was going to say, when we looked it up to see when our next one would be, it looked like it was 2021. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> no, a ways that's, away. Yeah, that's, ways, that's way too far. That can't be right. This I, be, somebody's going to be in December or something. It's like twice a year at least. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody will come up with one before then. <laughs> Christina's got one of those stamp cards. You get nine uh, apocalypse. Yep. You get the tenth one for free. So. Uh, I've, I've gone through a few of them so far. <laughs> <laughs> I love that website that will tell you how many apocalypses you've survived. I think I'm at forty-five. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so, Hertz, you, when you, when you're looking at you know, you've been obviously behind the scenes for a while and you're absolutely involved in the community and kudos for, for being one of these people that, you know, is inspiring other people to come out. Uh, but when you look at the future, especially maybe in the uh, political state the United States is right now, are you optimistic about the future of atheism down in your neck of the woods? In Minnesota? Oof, that's a good question. Um, Once in a while, we ask a good question. Just to throw you. <laughs> Couldn't you just ask me which Star Wars movie was my favorite? That is so. That was my here. next question. Right after that. <laughs> uh, let's see the last one. Uh, I, I thought that was amazing. Um, but back to the the actual question. My, my optimistic side is, well, obviously optimistic and says that, you know, Minnesota can weather this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do have our Christian fundamental politicians and stuff who have tried to throw things like um, in God we trust in the classrooms and such. And, you know, as soon as we hear Minnesota atheists hears about that, we do try to mobilize and get together. Um <sighs> It's tough, though, because Minnesota kind of sometimes feels like a bubble. And my worry is how far and how long will the bubble last? Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, if things start happening on a federal level, you know, are we going to have enough, you know, like, for example, if abortion. Yeah, Minnesota hasn't come out and said, yes, we're going to be okay with abortions. We're going to make it legal and all that fun, you know, superseding anything on a federal level you know that has not happened yet and we have had you know 20 week bans that have tried to happen so you know it's, it's a worry because it feels like feels kind of like there's there's holes in my bubble and i'm mm-hmm. like no, no y'all need to get out <laughs> yeah yeah I do and understand. yeah so so i mean not the most optimistic in fact one of the panels i'm on for convergence this year is um could the handmaid's tale happen yeah and it's 
I definitely feel that. I actually used that for a talk we did on the Day of Reason about the separation of church and state and kind of a, hey, this is this is what can happen easily. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all too easily. It's it's interesting to hear that because it seems to me that if we're going by the numbers, uh, it seems to me that the, the movement has, well, you know, there's more and more people that are pulling away from their faith and Christianity seems to be dying. Yet, it's just more powerful now than it was maybe 10 years ago. You know, more politically active. Is it, is it maybe just, maybe in your opinion, the last great breath before it just whim- dies off in a whimper? Or do you actually think it, this is actually a, a thread that's here to stay? I think that this has been calculated by a lot of the people who are, and I think that this was something that they have been pushing and getting ready for for decades. Mm-hmm. What do you call and that? now the, they have it. The Blitz Project? Is that what they called it? Oh, something like that. But yeah, I've read some articles and stuff of people who are like, this is, this is a thing that they have been trying to do for a long time. And in looking at it, it like it makes sense. Yeah, it does. In my head, at least. And it's so I think that on one hand, it's potentially a good. It is potentially a big last hurrah. Um, but it's a, something that they've been pushing, and even if it fizzles very quickly, we still have to deal with all of the issues that this is causing. Yeah. There's federal judges who are making decisions that. You know, we may not even hear about until it's way too late. Yes, yes, indeed. Hmm. So, so I guess in, in, in finishing, Hertzie, since you've been doing this for for a little while and you're obviously involved, what what would you recommend to the atheist out there who is listening to the show, and he or she may be a bit closeted and not sure what to do? What would you recommend this person does to help the community? Well, first off, if you're in a situation which you feel you will not be safe coming out, don't. Don't worry about it. We're here. We're working. Um, If you do feel like you are comfortable about coming out and such, find your local group. And, you know, if you're someone who's like, yeah, but my local group is a bunch of old white guys, check out places like Black Nonbelievers. Um, Check out meetup.com. A lot of places will use those for their groups. Uh, We actually have one of our meetups is actually female free thinkers. Hmm. And it's just women and those who identify as women. Wow. That's it. Wow. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. So, you know, and if and even joining them and being like, hey, I'm going to start this this meetup. I'm going to start this this little kind of group that meets. And and if maybe you don't want to do that, start a gaming group. We have a gaming group called Godless Gamers. Go ahead and steal the name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I like it. All we do is we get together and we play board games. There we go. Sounds great. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Oh, one more thing for mm-hmm. the, for your show, uh, Atheist Talk. What's coming? What's coming on the pipe for these guys? Let's see. Like I said, uh, this week we have Mendy the Thomas on. Um, after that, I'm not sure if the schedule is filled up yet. Okay. I will have to double check, um, but we—I mean—we always have something because yeah. we kind of have to be there on Sunday morning. <laughs> yes, I understand that all too well. <laughs> Perfect, Hersey. Thank you so much for being with us today. We really, really appreciate that. You're gonna send me all those links, and we're gonna put that in the notes of the show. But before I let you go, I gotta have you say, "Hey, this is Hersey Hurst, a Minnesota atheist, and I took a left in the valley." Hey, my name is Hertzie Hertz. I'm with Minnesota Atheists and Atheist Talk, and I took a left at the valley. Fantastic. And that was Hertzie Hertz of Minnesota Atheist. What a doll he was. A dime. Yes. A total dollar. Boy, I can I can see some other shows coming up. She's oh, got, she, yes. Yeah, she's got a lot of yes. stuff going on. Absolutely. And, yep. you know, kudos for her for doing all that great work that she has yeah. done in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, it makes me want to visit Minnesota now. <laughs> oh, you'd love it. It's a great state. I think so, too. I think yeah. it would be great for us to go down there. I've never been down there. I thought, like, Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, I thought that was just an invention of the media. Oh, no. There, I think there it were, actually happened. Yeah, there were two cities. There's Minneapolis and St. Paul, and they're right across the river from each other so you, you get the, you, you get both when you go to Minneapolis fantastic yeah. well thank you so much for being with us and thank you for listening and uh, thank you to Hertzie Hurst for being with us on the show today uh, you can find us at leftofvalley.com you can find
find us on Facebook, on Twitter, at LEDV Podcast. You can send us an email at left at valley at outlook.com. You can send your complaints to Nancy on the third floor, but beware the incoming knife. If you like what we're doing, be like Freethinker215 and uh, su- support us on Patreon slash LETV. What am I missing here? Give us a five-star review wherever you find us. It helps us and helps others find the show. It's a lot to remember after a while. Okay, coming up. Next week, we'll have Lilith Starr, the ah. Satanist. She wrote a book, and she'll be back. She hasn't been with us in quite a while. So Looking that's be forward to that. The weekend after that, we'll have our Canada Day special. Is that coming up? That, my gosh, we it's are coming up real quick. July. Yeah, on the 29th, because July 1st is Canada Day, obviously. Uh, we'll have our friend Ahmed. Remember Ahmed? Sure. He's going to be with us. Yeah, good. And uh, we might also have Majid Soliman as well. And uh, since they are new Canadians... Uh, they're going to tell us what does that mean for them to be Canadians. Oh, terrific. And we'll have a whole bunch of nice facts about Canada as well. Okay, in July, we'll have the Ginger Snaps with Amy Cool. And we'll also have uh, lawyer extraordinaire Andrew Torres to talk to us about the law side, about the whole abortion debate they're having down in the States. And, of course, the extraordinary Seth Andrews is going to come back Coming as up. well. Coming up. Perfect. And what else do I have? Oh, yes. Michael, speaking of Bernie Sanders, our friend Michael Sparks is going to return and he's going to face off against Jeremy Montanez. Oh. Who we also had on the show. So the, he's going to defend Bernie Sanders and Jeremy's going to say, no, it's not a good choice. Ooh, interesting political that should debate. Be, our own political debate. Exactly. Wow. That should be an interesting little show yeah. happening here. Uh, let's see. What else do we have planned? Yeah, that's it. I, that, that's what I got so far at this point. All right. Sounds good. It's great to have a Canadian moderated debate between two Americans. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Should be fun. All right. Anything else I need to add? Go love your pets. Yeah, yeah cuddle is a she, puppy. Is she chewing on the cords? No. no. She's sniffing the pole. Yes. Yep. Hey, Sienna was licking it earlier, so. <laughs> Don't weird. lick the stripper pole. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Until next time. Take a sec, don't mean to sound so hateful But I swear to God, pun intended I find it disgraceful The thousands of children are raped by priests And since they're holy men of God They get away scot-free And the Pope does his very best To keep it on the hush Don't wanna affect business He loves money too much We know that they love the kids But how the fuck can we protect them While they plan to molest them We teaching them to respect them Respect them Fuck that The system is broke down Working backwards in the only action of tactic I plan to practice now is to attack them The parties of God's hands are bloodstained Millions of murders by believers And they're all in God's name And let me take a sec Don't mean to sound so hateful But I swear to God, pun intended I find it disgraceful That many atheists are told to be quiet You're not alone, speak your mind Time to let it be known I'm proud to be an atheist A skeptic, a non-believer Something to be ashamed. I'm an atheist. Atheist. Atheist.